while that last video rendered, I tried something that didn't work. And I tried something else and something else. And that's part of the joy of working with Photoshop. Save your work and try things. Now, adding a new layer and turning it into a, a separate smart object that doesn't have the filters attached to it. There's a number of ways to do this, but there's a shortcut I've found works really good. It's a combo shortcut. And the reason I want you to learn it is because the second shortcut is not documented anywhere inside of Photoshop. So if I hold Shift, Option, Command, and then hit the letter N, I get a new layer. I'm still holding down Shift, Option, and Command, and then hit the letter E for everything. That gives me everything visible below this. Now, Shift, Option, Command, E sometimes works. It depends what layer you're on. Sometimes you're on an adjustment layer and it doesn't work. So if I undo, Shift, Option, Command, N, and then tap E while you're still holding down Shift, Option, Command. So it's those three keys, N, then E. Not holding down N and E at the same time, right? So undo, Shift, Option, Command, N, tap E. Okay? That gives you a brand new layer with everything visible on there. And then you can play with blending modes. Now, I haven't shown you blending modes, and this isn't where I want to stop. But I do want to show you, hey, there's a whole bunch of these things. And you can click and look and hold this down and click and look and what's happening or you can just run through them with the move tool here uh, selected by holding down shift and hitting plus 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 and you're running through the blending modes and some of them like that look terrible and some of them might be interesting and you might think hey doesn't this look exactly like it did well the easiest way to tell is just to click on this eyeball and yeah, it looks exactly like it did because these are identical. Light and color didn't do anything. But other options, see how that brightened up? Other options do do things. And then you get to some really strange ones coming up. Oh, my. And um, you work your way all the way back around to normal. Now, as you tap through the blending modes, you might take note pause when something looks good because we have the exact same image the only thing that really happens is on multiply that gives us much deeper tones that are already there but i'm at command z because that's not what i want to do i want to turn this into a smart object and use a filter a different filter and yeah we could go back into camera raw <coughs> and then use blending modes because then we would have something different but i was trying for something unexpected. So I went to filter. Remember, I turned this into a smart object. So the filter is going to be non-destructive. Filter, blur, motion blur. And then we have a whole bunch of darks here. So if I go horizontal, which is the angle of zero, it doesn't. it's just going to amplify the darks and we're going to amplify the lights. What happens if we go vertical? Change this angle to 90 and hit tab, and then start pulling the distance up. You gotta have preview on. If this is not on, you won't see anything. Unlike Illustrator, I believe preview's on in Photoshop by default. <clears throat> now, if I stopped there and said okay, now remember, we can always double click this to get back into it. Then when you run through the blending modes, now we're gonna get something very different. Hold down shift and the plus sign. Nothing happens with dissolve, it's only when you have transparency. And you get something typically awful. You get a bunch of dots. This is working a little differently than I expected. So let's just forget about that digression into dissolve and run through these blending modes. And you might notice that we're getting some unexpected results. Some look just the same as the other one. And hey, does this look the same? Pin light, turn it off, turn it on. Hey, it's exactly the same. How come? How come pin light does that? Well, every image is different. That's different, huh? Look at the horizontal lines, even though our blur was vertical. Isn't that interesting? 
And then we move through. These last ones can be interesting, but we'll get back to normal. What I want to do is what happens if we just go crazy with this filter and come all the way out here and say, hey, this could actually be kind of a cool background. What about that? Having that be one of our images, one of our backgrounds for our users to use on their, on their projects. Just one of any number of examples. And then of course, because we took this all the way out into motion blur, what happens if we start clicking through? That's certainly different and unexpected on darken. And you start seeing this is different than when we only had a, a 75 as our multiplier. That's kind of interesting. What does that look like compared to our original? See how it lightened up so many of our darker areas and we have a more uniform feel. That's kind of nice. So you make a note and maybe save out a JPEG with Lighten or not. It's up to you. And work your way through deciding, hmm, this is interesting, but then look at these colors right here. This is a deal killer because that looks terrible. So you keep walking through. And what looks good, what doesn't? Now we're at pin light again. When we move down into difference, this time we're gonna get something really different because now the difference between these two is absolutely significant. And we're seeing different versions of what we had before. That's it. unusual as well. So let's get back to normal and say, this could be interesting. Now I'll come back and I'll give you one more variation on a theme, which I have no idea what it'll be, but I want you to experiment. And when you find something you like, save it, Command S. Hey, look, I saved it. What can we do on top of this to change things? Maybe in combination with the blending mode, maybe without it at all.